Well, we are coming to you live from our News First studios here in Colombo on TV1. Good evening and welcome. This is News First Primetime News. I'm Shahin Jerome Pathy. A very good evening. I'm Mahina Bongzo. Here's a look at your headlines for tonight. Confirmation that garbage from foreign nations have been dumped in Katunayaka. Professionals say that the Freeport company is responsible. Price of a loaf of bread increased by 5 rupees from midnight tonight. Anticipatory bail application of police commission secretary dismissed. Orders issued for his arrest. Take a look at those stories in detail now. Officials of the Central Environmental Authority inspected the garbage dump located at a private company space within the Katunayaka Free Trade Zone. In an investigation carried out by the Central Environmental Authority, it was revealed that 130 containers were brought into the country by this private company in 2017 using a gasset issued in 2013. 57 containers out of these containers had been re-exported and 72 containers are placed at Katnaika. We were able to see the mattresses and carpets that were with the waste. We were able to see a number of containers. As per what the company said, this has arrived in the country as a mistake. After inspections, we informed that garbage has been sent back to the country that it came from. Does the Central Environmental Authority, the apex institution for the protection of the environment of our motherland, accept that this garbage was brought into the country as a result of a mistake? The Basel Convention is an international convention with 187 signatory countries. Sri Lanka ratified the convention in 1992. If any form of waste is to be exported to another country, the permission of that country must be sought first. In Sri Lanka, the competent authority for this is the Central Environmental Authority. At that time itself, we took a cabinet decision and got cabinet approval for that as well, not to import any waste material from any other country in the world. If someone claims that this was brought down by mistake, there is a big issue there. The first issue is whether this has been sent by the company that is sending it as a result of a mistake, or whether they have declared this under false interpretation to the customs. If it is the second factor, or if it is what it seems like with the available facts, the legal status is very clear. As per the customs ordinance, it can, under the provision of law for importing goods under fake or false pretenses, and re-export these containers. The company that was involved in bringing this down can be fined, and other punishments could be given under the provisions of the customs ordinance and other laws. It is strictly illegal to import garbage into the country. Is it, therefore, justifiable to merely re-export the said consignments without legal action being taken against the perpetrators of this unconscionable act? What happens uh, if they can't find the guy out there in, in the, the point of origin? Yes. Um, whose responsibility? Is it the shipper or is it the free port operator? Well, if it has been brought to the Freeport operator and you can't find a buyer, it's the Freeport operator who will be responsible. Meanwhile, another consignment of 102 containers containing this kind of material, which have been unloaded at the CICT of the Colombo port, has been taken into the custody of the Sri Lanka Customs for further inspection. While several containers have already been inspected, it has been confirmed that this kind of material has been shipped in the containers under the guise of shipping sleeping mattresses. 102 waste containers have already been identified by the Sri Lanka Customs Authority. Around 120 containers with discarded matter have already been transported out of the port. The legal background to carry out this operation has been provided in 2013 by Mahindra Rajapaksa. He has released a gazette notification under his signature as the Minister of Finance. The discarded matter has been exempted from the Customs Ordinance, the Monetary Control Act and the Import and Export Control Act. Hence, the Customs cannot intervene in this. The 122 containers of discarded material is currently being held at a hub area in the Katunayaka Free Trade Zone. This is a photograph of that pile. It is clearly stated in the Basel Convention. Further, under the National Policy on Solid Waste Management, it has been prohibited to import discarded material to the country. 
Moreover, it is also prohibited to create new recycling plants based on imported discarded material which have been recycled. So, when it is stated in fine print under the Basel Convention, how can someone issue such a gazette? Does the subject minister have a legal right to overlook and render such provisions void? This has been issued by a finance minister, Mahinda Rajpaksa. If so, the finance minister should also have the right to revoke this. We urge the current finance minister to revoke this gazette notification. Under the SEPTA and ISEPTA trade deals, Sri Lanka has been given a quota of all the condiments. In 2018, the quota was 2,500 metric tons. 2,700 metric tons have been sent to India and it is a major issue to India. How has Sri Lanka exported more pepper than it has produced? When the customs carried out an investigation based on this matter, it was revealed that pepper had been imported into the country, stored at the same hub in question where the discarded material is currently stored and has been exported, claiming that the pepper was manufactured in Sri Lanka. As a result, the price of pepper was affected adversely and pepper farmers were unable to sell pepper which used to be priced at 1,000 rupees for even 400 rupees. This became a public catastrophe. Therefore, it is evident that large-scale businessmen in the country are willing to import any sort of waste as long as their profit margins can be increased and they have been further encouraged through this gazette signed in 2013. This is a document, a custom declaration for an importation done in the year 2018. The document states that mattresses were being imported. A company in England had sent these containers to Sri Lanka and News First initial research revealed that the said company seems to be defunct. A consignment had been imported under the name of a company located in Enderamulla. However, such a company was not found at its registered address. A reputed and respected private company in this country was a consignee in this transaction. At a time when Sri Lanka is struggling with its own garbage disposal issues, what is the company that is bringing in more garbage into the country? Who are the people who are behind these amoral acts? News First is in possession of all information pertaining to this particular company. We respect other private sector institutions and therefore ask the company involved to come clean and provide answers to the relevant authorities with regard to this issue. We live in a country where 33 lives were lost when a garbage dump collapsed in Mithotamulla. We live in a country where a garbage dump in Gohagoda is polluting the Mahaveli River. We live in a country where garbage dumps can be found in almost all major cities. Shouldn't the law enforcement authorities enact the law against such people who are importing more garbage into the country? Without doubt, creating job opportunities and income methods is beneficial to the society. However, if a company is carrying out a racket to bring garbage into the country for financial gain, no person with a conscience and a moral compass will approve such acts. Bakery owners have decided to increase the price of a loaf of bread following the price increase of wheat flour. Hence, the price of a loaf of bread will be increased by 5 rupees from midnight today. The two leading companies which import wheat flour to the country decided to increase a kilogram of wheat flour by 7 rupees yesterday. We decided to increase the price of a loaf of bread by 5 rupees. That will come into effect from midnight today. If price of wheat flour increases, price of bread must be increased. The bakery owners have no other alternative. We would also like to emphasize on the fact that we are only increasing the price of bread. Our association have not decided anything regarding any other bakery products. If the price of any other bakery product is increased, our association will not have an involvement in it. Accordingly, the price of a loaf of bread, which is now at 60 rupees, will be 65 rupees from midnight today. The standard weight of a loaf of bread is 456 grams. I request the bakery owners to keep up with that standard from tomorrow onward. I will show you the real weight of a loaf of bread that is there in the market today. How many grams is it? 350 grams. The price of this loaf of bread right here is 80 rupees. Therefore, we request immediate action should be taken regarding this price increase. Therefore, if the price of bread will be increased, the weight should also be amended in line with that. 
Meanwhile, the Consumer Affairs Authority says the increase of the price of wheat flour was carried out in an illegal manner. These companies have increased the price of wheat flour against a backdrop where a maximum retail price was imposed on wheat flour on Thursday, the 14th of July 2016. We only have one thing to ask. Where is the cost of living committee which was under the purview of the Prime Minister? We allege that the cost of living committee has struck a billion rupee deal with Prima in this whole debacle. Say no if you can. What is the purpose of having these cost of living committees, consumer affairs authorities and consumer acts? As of yet, no action has been taken against this. However, the consumer affairs authority said that legal action will be taken against the sudden price increase of wheat flour. The U.S. Ambassador to Sri Lanka, Lena B. Teplitz, conducted a live Facebook chat earlier today via the official Facebook page of the U.S. Embassy of Colombo. Responding to a question whether the Millennium Challenge Corporation Compact establishes an economic corridor between Colombo and Trincomalee, the Ambassador has said the MCC Compact is merely a development assistance agreement. Elaborating further, the Ambassador says the government of Sri Lanka and MCC had identified weak transport infrastructure and weak land administration practices as two binding constraints to economic growth in Sri Lanka. Thus, the MCC compact with a total budget of 480 million US dollars was introduced in order to address these constraints. In reply to a query polls questioning if USAID can support Sri Lanka in other avenues apart from transport and land administration, the US ambassador has said roughly 40 million US dollars of development assistance, which she has stressed are not loans, is mostly provided through USAID, which is one US government development assistance provider. The chat was aimed at discussing the strength of U.S.-Sri Lanka relationship and also to address the recent misinformation that has been spreading. Hoodwinking the government and hoodwinking the people are two different things. Well, here are some of the views expressed by State Minister of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources Development, Dilip Vedarachi, at an event held in Tangol today. We make a request from the Prime Minister. Recently, our assistant leader of our party, Minister of Power, Ravi Karnonaika, visited the former president's house in Madamulana in a chopper. There is no issue in going there. He then went to the Kondagala Bihar from there. He has presented a proposal worth billions. I think it was as per a request made by our Secretary of Defence. He has gone to West It with the people there. I make a request from the Prime Minister. As the Chairman of the District Development Committee, I'd like to say there are MPs and ministers from this area. It is wrong that he went there while undermining us. I ask the Prime Minister to ensure that these type of incidents do not occur again. I also request him to look into this and do the needful. Do not underestimate our district. No, I did not. He went there. I had asked for electricity on behalf of the Kondagala Viharia, so he had gone there to do that. President Maithripala Sirisena declared opened a newly constructed sacred relic chamber and sermon chamber at the Palayada Raja Mahaviharia in Palindanura yesterday. 26 million rupees has been spent on the building that consists of a museum and a library. <laughs> I think the previous government came into power because of President Maitri Palasiri Sena. The others, however, clung on to him and secured power. You let them amend the constitution. They have reduced your powers in the amended constitution with or without your consent. I'd like to ask what you think about the criticism towards the Mahasangha. Look at the insults made towards the Mahasangha by the acting minister. Can't you do anything about it? Don't you have the power? With the executive powers vested in you by the people, can't you do something about this? The central bank bond scam was a disaster. Nothing has been done about it as of yet. This country arrests when coconuts and mangoes are stolen. During the address of the Anunayaka, a statement made by a state minister was mentioned. I saw it in the media too. Despite the positions they hold, be it a minister or a state sector employee, we do not accept this type of behavior. We condemn and reject such statements. 
the president also expressed the following views. We have identified the respondents of the central bank bond scam case. Some have been arrested. Notices have been issued against those who have left the country. I personally held a discussion with the Prime Minister of Singapore about bringing down Arjuna Mahendran to the country. But we were informed that he is in hiding. Investigations are ongoing. Those who carried out this massive financial fraud are using their intelligence to not get caught. I'd like to state here that all those involved in the April 21st attacks have been arrested. If the death penalty is cancelled, we will not be able to impose death penalty on them. That is why I have decided to implement the act to impose death penalty. The Mahanayaka Thera urged for us to search for the perpetrators responsible for the bond scam. Not just them, we are yet to find the murderers and thieves during the previous regime. That's why most of these people call us thieves. We call them thieves too then, because those who didn't capture thieves are also thieves. That's why the country is in this current state now. A model village built in Alpitia under the Samata Sevena Yali Pibidena Udagamana housing project was vested with the people today. This event was held under the auspices of the deputy leader of the United National Party, Minister Sajit Premadasa. <laughs> This village, that is the 216th Udagammana village, constructed under the Samata Sevena Yali Pibidena Udagammana housing project, is named Abises Gama. The model village, consisting 25 houses completed with all facilities, was constructed with a total cost of 33.1 million rupees. Everyone knows that no matter where we go, be it a village, funeral or a house, everyone speaks of the fact that this country needs Sajid Premadasa. We have communicated this message to all the members of the United National Party. As a matter of fact, the frontline MPs held a meeting to discuss this matter. Through his agenda, he has proved not only to the country but to the entire world that he is a man of his word and that he is a talented person who actively involves himself in fulfilling the needs of the people. You are the hope of this country. Therefore, we believe that you will become the leader that this country needs. <laughs> This Udagamman housing project is also swimming against the tide. By 2025, we have to make 20,000 villages and vest it with the general public. This is not an easy task. We have to dedicate every day of the year to this task. But what is sad is, the foxes on the banks of the river continue to hoot. They continue to sling mud and continue to engage in character assassination and watch every move we make. The green-eyed monster in them is aroused when a land is given to an innocent man in this country. These hooting foxes are the corrupted seasoned thieves in this country. I get so much of criticism and threats, I sometimes wonder whether I will be killed. But my dear friends, us Premadasas do not fear death. If someone kills me after I finish building the 20,000 Udagammana villages, my death will be meaningful. I would like to state that no matter who bombs Sajid Premadasa, the son of Ranasinghe Premadas would not look back until he finishes building the 20,000 Udagammana villages. <laughs> Non-Cabinet Minister of Science, Technology and Research, Sujiva Sena Singha, had organized a media briefing at the Government Information Department in Colombo today. The objective of the media briefing was to create awareness on the Shilpa Sena exhibition scheduled to be held from the 18th to the 21st of this month in Colombo. We aim to provide an attractive and knowledgeable experience to all those who visit the exhibition. The future of our country rests on the strength of our products and exports. People are not encouraged to pursue the fields of science and technology. Therefore, our aim is to provide entertainment combined with knowledge for the entire family to enjoy for several hours. <laughs> Elections Commission ने क्या किया फलास सभा चांदे तेंदु पुलों के लो अक्टूबर माह से इटे पस्से आप दिसंबर माह तक आवाज़ चांदे आके नमः चांदे आ ने इवनी तात्पर्य अक्तूल वो तुम्हाला मिच्छर कार्य आके निला मिवनी वैदेशिक राना I was given this ministry after four to five months. There is no point in reminiscing. We should contribute as much as we can with the authority we are given. Based on the time I have left and before the so-called elections you speak of are held, we will be able to take this initiative to four districts. So, 
Is it not better to implement this in those four districts rather than lamenting over the time which has forgone? No, do not try to debate. When you ask a question, remain quiet until it is answered. Thereafter, you may ask another question. This is a trend we need to change in the country, where the media briefings turn into debates. If we lament over the past, we will never progress. Attorney General Dapula de Livera ordered the acting IGP this evening to arrest Samandi Sanayaka, the secretary to the National Police Commission, and Damianti Jayaratna, the former senior assistant secretary of defense, before this Friday. The Attorney General issued this order following a request made by the acting IGP on the matter. The Attorney General added that he has come to a conclusion, noting that sufficient evidence remains to prove that the duo were linked to the floating armory of avant garde, thus allowing them to be arrested as per the firearms ordinance. He also ordered for the duo to be presented before the Gaul Magistrates Court following their arrests. On to more local news, two protests were staged today demanding solutions for issues pertaining to lands. A group had converged in the center of the Ampara town demanding for the state land special provisions bill to be passed and for land ownership deeds to be issued. In Wallasmuda, another group staged a protest saying that their lands that they were residing for a long time were lost due to the negligence of the officials. <laughs> In 1970, a plot of land in Wallace owned by the state has been given to a group of residents. After a few years, that land has been sold to another group of people without a deed. The court has ordered that plot of land to be given to the original owners. After the falls of the government, if the division secretariats had accepted this properly, they would have presented the documents to court. If that was done, the court would have given the decision then and there that this land is owned by us. We are now on the street because that was not done. According to our correspondent, the protesters dispersed after the divisional secretariat promised them of an alternative plot of land. Meanwhile, another group of people staged a protest requesting the immediate approval of the state land special provisions bill that is being brought by the government. This is how Minister Daya Gamage was seen keeping close with the protesters. When news first spoke with these protesters, it was evident that these group of people did not know why they were protesting. <laughs> Well, in sports news, Sirasa TV was awarded the gold medal for the most outstanding sports promoter of 2017 and 18 at the Presidential Sports Awards, which was held in Colombo. Sports First Orleans Platinum Awards, which was broadcast on Sirasa TV, was awarded the respective gold medal.
The Presidential Sports Awards was held in Colombo today with the objective of celebrating and felicitating sportsmen, women, coaches and those who contributed to sports through various aspects. The event was held under the patronage of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Parmi Vasanti Maristela was adjudged the most outstanding upcoming sportswoman of the year, while athlete Aruna Darshana was named the most outstanding upcoming sportsman of the year. Sports First Allianz Platinum Awards, which was organized to commend sportsmen and women in the country, was recognized as the most outstanding sports promoter of the year. Sports First Allianz Platinum Awards was held in order to felicitate local sportsmen and women who performed exceptionally in the local and international sporting arena between December 2017 and December 2018. Following an island-wide promotional campaign, talented sportsmen and women were selected based on applications which were received. This World Cup taught us many lessons. Over the past few months, I realized that in order to uplift a sport in a country, a clean and orderly administration must be set in place. We came to a decision today to request all coaching staff attached to the national cricket team to step down after the Bangladesh ODI series and to renegotiate their contracts. This is how things should be changed. Although the public wanted this change earlier, it was not possible as the World Cup was around the corner. And that brings tonight's edition of News First Prime Time News to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I am Shahin Jirangpati. And I'm Mahina Bongzo. Good night.